What's up, gang, and welcome to another episode of Inspired By, a series where we look at the musical trends, past and present, to understand the techniques used so that you guys can make better music. And today, I've got something slightly different for you. My name's Will, and I make a plethora of music under the moniker Hush Child. Today we're looking at the SP404. It's an absolute iconic piece of gear that is used a lot within the lo-fi community and within the live electronic dance community as well. A lot of producers use it as a DJ tool, but also a lot of bedroom producers use it as kind of an outboard piece of gear to run their tracks through, to give it some warmth and grit, as well as use the beat repeat parameters. Now I'm sure like a lot of you out there, I would love to have that piece of gear, but I just can't afford to drop the price tag on it. Maybe one day if I get some more subscribers. So whilst you're there, make sure you leave a comment, like and subscribe, hit that bell icon so we can keep moving on up. <laughs> I thought that if I managed to create an effects rack in Ableton, it could be a good alternative to the Roland SP404 and something that I can give back to the community. As always, all my other links can be found in the description below from anything I've mentioned in today's videos or previous. And if you join my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash the Will Hatton, you can download this SP404 low fire as well as the projects from previous videos as well. Let's jump into it. For the sake of today's example, we're just gonna throw it on the master. We've got this nice pastel colored lo-fi machine. And there's a fair bit going on inside it. If we scroll through, you can see just how many things I've got synced up to the macros and being controlled by our main interface. And I'm gonna walk you through that now. Let's start from the beginning. When you bring in lo-fi, you're gonna first generate some noise. And with this low fire button here, you can control just how dark that noise is or how bright it is with some volume there as well. And with this, you can see, well, what's being introduced. We've got the glue compressor coming in after 20 clicks. And in this panel here, we've got all our noise simulation there. So we're just controlling some of the density of noise, the volume of noise, and the LFO shape as well. So we're making sure that there's a little bit of randomness in there as if, you know, a blank side of vinyl was playing and you're getting kind of the, the swooshes, the ins and outs of the frequencies. Let's add some noise to our melody. So you should be able to hear how that glue compressor kind of brings everything in, makes everything s seem a little bit tighter, a little bit more well kept. Next to this, we've also got the pitch wobble as well. We're gonna be creating a bit of a pitch bend effect, like a lot of tape emulators. And we're also, as we increase that pitch wobble, we'll also start to introduce kind of a magnetic tape feel, similar to the RC20's last setting where we kind of start ducking the volume as well as if the needle was skipping a little bit. So this is what that sounds like. No noise on this one. And I find that the sweet spot here is between kind of 75 and 105, somewhere there. Low fire, take it up to about 80. some really lovely noise there, making everything sound a little bit more lo-fi. Working our way backwards, we've got the filter. Does exactly as intended, just a, an easy filter effect that we can map to you know any macros or knobs, or any hardware we're using, as we'll do in a second. And that's coupled with a little bit of overdrive as well. We've got this isolate, which is just essentially an on-off from the EQ3 with a kind of telephone EQ effect. So that just works as a nice on-off. And we've got this bit crush here. And that's done really cleanly on this uh, crush settings here, just with Redux. 
And as you can see in my mapping settings, we're only rolling that down to about 5,000 hertz because we don't want to roll it all the way down. We just want to take off some of those uh, down sampled, real teeny sounds. We don't want to go down like uh, we do with the filter to those submarine depths of the track. Finally, come into our three main effects that you're going to make a lot of use of. We've got the beat repeats. So with this, we can choose on and off. And with this, what you can see I'm doing is essentially just turning this off. It doesn't start at one this time around. It starts at 20 because I didn't want anybody to jog their controller if they're mapping it to any knobs on a mini device and uh, accidentally trigger a beat repeat. So this one is set to 20 for it to come on. And the length is affecting how much of the area is looped um, as well as a small part of pitch decay. So it just again gives that kind of vinyl sampled sound. So if we take it to a quarter note length and turn on our beat repeat, you should see what I mean. Can you see that the pitch is kind of decaying over time as well? So again, that's just a nice little bit of color to the low fire effects rack there. And finally, we have a delay and freeze delay here. Freeze delay taking effect past 80%. Um, up until that point, we're just essentially controlling the dry through the wet. And then like I said, after that 80% mark, I wanted to just cut out the music so you had that kind of freeze effect. And then we're back in. So let's get some settings on here. Let's take this up to about 70%. Let's take our wobble to like, yeah, 80. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna press Command M and we're gonna map some of these settings to the knobs on my MPD over here. Uh, and you'll see just how you can use it on the fly, perhaps within a live scenario or recording your master track in. So like I said, Command M and just choose the knobs that you wanna use. So beat repeats at the top, Choose our next one over, choose our beat repeat. Let's have our filters and uh, isolation on the bottom. Just wherever makes sense to you. And then our delay and isolate in the middle. So this will be my delay and this will be my isolate. Okay, so after that, you can just hit Command M again and then you're free to play if you've got an mpd or if you guys want me to do a breakdown of how to set up your live performance gear please do let me know in the comments below um, i've set up a live rig uh, for streaming purposes and for uh, playing once we come out of uh, lockdown for live performances and uh, i would love to show it off so if you guys want to see that do let me know but just as a quick side note if you're mapping uh, an mpd Command M, look in your settings here. I don't wanna set my maximum uh, fades to six. I'd rather have them at zero. I don't want to be adding any extra gain here. So that's why I'm bringing that max down there. And then just press Command M. So let's just have some fun with this. I'm gonna have to use my left hand so you guys can see it at home. So there we have it guys, there's my custom effects rack, the low fire and if you want to download that all you have to do is join my Patreon and be part of any tier and you'll get that. You can make adjustments to it and include it in your own music or your own live sets. If you do download it, I would love to hear what you do with it. So make sure that you join our Discord as well, the link is in the description below. As always guys, I thank you so much and I'll see you next time.